Next stop is West Memphis. West Memphis is, as you may guess, west of Memphis. However, it is not part of Tennessee. It is in Arkansas. So the cool thing about Memphis, Tennessee, the city is uh, it's right on the border of Arkansas to the west and then Mississippi right to the south. So there's a few states converging right there. And staying at the Tom Sawyer RV Park, which is right on the Mississippi River. Whenever I go in to register, I turn the truck on. Auto start. That way the AC is running for the dogs and it's locked. Holy cow, I totally approve of this site. Beautiful views. I did have to hook up on the other side. I pulled in backwards. That way I could get this view. Nice, that's the Mississippi out there. Is Jason Pearl approve? Special breakfast on the patio today. I was walking the dogs. We walked around here and then we're gonna go all the way down there and walk around the loop over there and then come back. Well, we walked that loop and then I was walking this way and of course we have to pass the RV right here and then Chase immediately lays down. <laughs> so I figured, oh, he's done. <laughs> So they're having a special breakfast on the patio. Well, it is a good opportunity to check out this huge pyramid in the middle of Memphis. It's Bass Pro. And uh, I think they have a restaurant up top, so it might be fun to get some breakfast up there. Bobby wants to get a fishing pole and uh, just go check things out. Word has it it's also good juju to be under a pyramid, so can you get, get some good juju juice? Holy cow! Like a whole village in here. There's a hotel in here too. Look, there's Chase. Well, here we are at the top of the pyramid. They give you a view of what you're walking out on. A little freaky. And there's downtown Memphis. This is the I-40, the first close bridge. The other bridge over there is the old bridge, I-55, with the footbridge next to it, as well as the train track bridge. Pretty morning over the city of blues. Look how big the front sign is that's on the front of the pyramid. 
Well, this morning I'm headed out early birdie to go get my uh, truck, not fixed, but there's a recall. So I got an appointment super early this morning and then gonna check out town after that. A little bit of traffic over the Mississippi. There's downtown Memphis over there. So Memphis is right on the border of uh, Arkansas and Mississippi. And so I'm in Mississippi at the Dodge dealership where that's where I'm going. And uh, first time to Mississippi, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> of course, I'm just across the just across the border. Well, unfortunately, uh, they have to order the freaking part. I even called ahead. You know, I said I've got this recall. Oh, come before nine, we can fit, get it fixed in a day. No. They have to come before nine so they can create a ticket and order the part. And then I have to come back another morning early, drop it off so they can fix it in a day. That's freaking frustrating. It's like a 35 minute trip to get out here. Memphis, Tennessee might be the heart of the blues, soul, and rock and roll, but Beale Street, one of the most iconic streets in the U.S., is definitely home of the blues. Beale Street has over two dozen establishments offering live music and entertainment every single night. Also in Memphis, you can find a lot of really good home-cooked Southern-style food, particularly barbecue. If you want to have some really good barbecue, you got to check out Rendezvous. Let's try this first bite. They serve them dry rubbed, and you got two different sauces to try with them. Mmm, that's really good. Wash it down. They've got, I don't normally like beer, but they have this really good beer here, ghost beer. It's actually brewed here in Memphis. It's a good meal waiting to happen. Well, what's a trip to Memphis without a visit to Graceland, Elvis Presley's home? Well, if you don't think you'll ever get there, or if you don't ever want to spend more than 50 bucks to tour his home, here are pictures of every room in his house that the tour takes you through. 
There is no videography or audio allowed on premises, but they do allow still photographs. Once you come through the front door of the house, to your right, you have this beautiful living room. Elvis wasn't just an entertainer for his fans, but he was an entertainer for his friends and family. The big long white couch you see on the right was custom built for this room and it's 15 feet long. Still standing in the foyer, after entering Graceland, you see the stairs which take you up to the second level. The tour doesn't go up there. However, Lisa Marie recounts that Elvis never came downstairs unless he was ready for the day and ready for business. She says that he always had jewels and all sorts of jewelry and decorations on him. Stepping into the house a little farther, on the right hand side you'll come to Elvis's parents' room. He had this built for them so that they could live a luxurious life that they never had. If you head to the left after entering Graceland, you will come to the formal dining room. Supposedly, Lisa Marie and her family still eat here whenever they visit Graceland. Heading through the dining room, you will come into the kitchen. The kitchen was staffed 24-7. And you will also see that Elvis had one of the very first microwaves. And I think, if I recall correctly, it was $600 when he bought it. The kitchen overlooks the jungle room. So you enter the jungle room after passing the kitchen. However, the tour doesn't highlight this room at this point. You see it again after coming up from the basement. The first room you come to once you're down in the basement on the left hand side is the media room. Probably my favorite room. This is where Elvis would bring down business people where he would have uh, business talks and stuff like that. And they also mentioned in the tour about the types of shows that Elvis loved because you can see there's a couple different TVs down there. He liked the uh, game shows and you know all those shows that were on in the 50s. You also see painted on the wall is the lightning bolt that is part of his logo with the letters TCB and it stood for taking care of business in a flash. Across from the media room and the only other room that you go through in the basement is the pool room and this is where Elvis hung out with his friends, smoked cigars, played pool. Notice that the walls and the ceiling are covered in tapestry and the ceiling, the tapestry is even pulled together at the top of the light. The tour then brings you back up the back side of the stairs and you reemerge looking into the jungle room and you can first see there's a crescent chair on the left hand side and that was Lisa Marie's favorite chair so it's got her bear there still on the chair. All of the furniture in here at the time was exceptionally modern and high class, high quality. After passing by the jungle room the tour takes you out back so you get to see the back side of the house. You also get to walk through a detached office room outside and a storage room. You can see where the horses were kept and also the racquetball court. Elvis Presley really enjoyed playing racquetball, so he had a court built at Graceland and he only had it built a few years before he ended up dying and uh, the day that he died he played racquetball with friends and uh, there was a piano in the racquetball room and they sat down and he played and sang Unchained Melody and Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain for his friends and then he went up to his bedroom and that's when he passed away. By the way, you get much more in the tour than just what you see here. You get to tour the museum that is on the grounds of Graceland and you can choose to go through the different museum setups that, I, that they have at the headquarters, the ticket office. And you also get to tour his different airplanes as well as walk through the grave and of course just be there in person. Come on Dodge service reps, let's do this again. Alrighty, attempt two and I've got my truck so I'm good to go, which is perfect because I'm leaving tomorrow. Did you know that there are logs, like huge logs and even full-size trees going down the Mississippi like every single day? That is a lot of timber. 
logs, debris to be collected somewhere. Thank you so much for joining me on my trip to Memphis, Tennessee. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you get notified when I post videos on RV living, travel, RV maintenance, as well as tips. And a very special thanks to those who are supporting the channel's efforts on Patreon and for those who are supporting the channel's efforts by purchasing t-shirts and channel merchandise, which can now be found in the bar just below the videos. In fact, this particular design, 100% of the proceeds actually go to Greyhound Adoption Groups. So you can support the channel as well as supporting Greyhound Adoption. And I've got new merchandise coming out really soon, so stay tuned for that. See you next time.